So throughout Star Wars history, the Galactic Republic is often placed on a pedestal as a shining example of democracy in the Star Wars universe. But I figured today we could take a look at how the Republic government actually functioned. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the Galactic Republic, which reigned before the Galactic Empire for thousands of years, is often seen by many of the people of the galaxy as sort of this beacon of light in galactic history. Hailed as a democracy that truly served the people of the galaxy throughout most of its existence, the Republic is often viewed in a favorable light, and a lot of that comes down to its government structure. So let's just jump right in with the basics of how the Republic government functioned. The Republic government seems to consist of three branches. Like a lot of republics in our world, it has a legislative, a judicial, and an executive branch. And while not much is known about the judicial branch of the Galactic Republic, we do know a lot about the legislative and executive branches. The legislative branch consists of the Galactic Senate, representatives from every world within the Republic, and would be responsible for drafting laws enforced by the Republic government. The legislative branch is led by the Chancellor, who ultimately leads the Senate in their discussions. He is also the leader of the executive branch, which would be responsible for carrying out enforcement of the laws decided by the legislature. The executive branch would also include the military arm of the Republic, being the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars, and any defense forces operated by the Republic before the outbreak of the war. So, it seems pretty similar to modern democracies in our world, but is it? You see, one interesting thing that I've noted while reading books released in the last couple years, canon books, mind you, is that there seems to be a relatively interesting process for someone making their way to becoming a Republic Senator. You see, these Senators, by the way, form the backbone of the legislative branch, which makes all the decisions on all of the laws enforced around the Republic. We see in the book Queen's Shadow the process that Padme goes through to become a Republic Senator, and it's not exactly democratic. The democratically elected Queen of Naboo appoints her, basically. In fact, this process has actually referenced a few other locations and seems to be basically standard across the galaxy. Elected or non-elected officials within a planet appoint a senator to represent their planet in the Galactic Republic. Meaning that, well, the planet itself may send a representative, and that representative may have some power within the legislature, that representative doesn't exactly represent the people of that planet, just that planet's governmental administration. Whether or not that totally disqualifies the Republic from actually being a Republic is up for debate, but it does seem kind of interesting that it appears that the Senators within the Galactic Republic are appointed and not elected. However, it is possible that this process does vary from planet to planet, and it might be something specific to Naboo and a few other worlds. Before the outbreak of the Clone Wars, the most powerful branch within the Republic was likely the Legislative Branch, with the Executive Branch only commanding a small military force of a handful of ships and some security guards, basically. During this time, planetary defense was mostly relocated to local defense fleets and not an overarching Republic military. However, the power of the executive branch was significantly expanded under Palpatine's reign during the later years of the Republic. With the passing of the Emergency Powers Act during the Separatist Crisis, the executive branch gained the ability to found an army. And with the creation of the Clone Army, which formed the Grand Army of the Republic, the executive branch became easily the most powerful branch of the Republic government. In fact, it was this deficit of power that allowed Palpatine to convert the Republic into the Galactic Empire. The Republic's political system ultimately failed and led to the rise of a dictatorship. However, that rise wouldn't be possible without the support of the people of the galaxy, and if you would like to learn why the people of the galaxy actually supported the rise of the Empire, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know what you think of the Republic's government system. Does it make sense? Is it just too bloated? Did the Separatists have a point when they said they really didn't seem to care about the Outer Rim? And do you think it actually was a democracy? Do you think the senators being appointed kind of disqualifies it from claiming to be one? And if you have anything you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.